Welcome to the hot sauce. This is Angel Planels, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 179 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Jay Kroc, a journalist and founder of Prime Fit Content, helping fitness professionals grow their business through marketing for active aging over 50. Jay resides in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome back to The Hot Sauce. Today, we're going to have a special episode. I've decided to branch out a little and reach out to different connections I've had throughout my career in life. And this is a gentleman that I um, met a few years ago, pre-pandemic. He had me on his podcast and he's had me on a few of his articles and I figure it's a good opportunity for people to intersect and meet a individual that's in the active aging uh, arena. So I'm going to introduce you to Jay Croft. Uh, Jay, would you like to actually, let's put Jay in the hot seat here. So he's going to go on the hot seat here. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> um, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself and tell us about your journey. Go for it. The floor is yours. Okay, well, first, Angel, thanks for having me on your show. Um, I was really delighted to hear from you last week about this, and I'm glad that you're doing this podcast. You're, 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 you're natural for it. You're such an easy conversationalist and always a pleasure to talk to, so I'm glad to be here. Um, so my journey, what, I, what, I, what I'm doing, I'll tell you what I'm doing now and then how I got here, I guess, because um, that's why we're talking. So I write about fitness and uh, healthy living for people over 50. My primary focus is to create content marketing materials and provide them to my customers who are gyms and fitness studios who are trying to appeal to people over 50. So that's my primary business is called prime fit content, like the prime of your life fit content. And, um, and I, basically create and sell content to gyms and studios that they then use on their websites, their blogs, their social media posts, and their email newsletters to let their communities and their prospects and even their clients know that they have um, skill and desire and heart and expertise to help people who are typically ignored by the fitness industry. And, and for me, that's, I call it people over 50. Some people say 55, some people say 45, whatever. The point is right about at midlife where our bodies are changing profoundly and our lifestyles are often changing. And through longer lifespans and better healthcare, we're all living longer now. So we are demanding more out of our post 50 life than perhaps previous generations did. So it's a great opportunity for people in fitness and health and well-being to market to uh, the over 50 demographic. Some people think that's cynical or exploitative. I don't mean it that way. I don't mean market in the sense of take advantage of. I mean market in the sense of let them know that you want their business because as you probably know, and many people listening to this know, you know, when you age out of the primary demographic, a lot of people don't want your business. And, um, and particularly in fitness, which is youth obsessed, if you're not 25 and hot, um, then you might not be the, the desired customer. And um, so if you want to have good steady stream of customers who are going to be with you for a long time, who have interesting challenges that you can help them with and have time and money to spend on their fitness, then I recommend the over 50 market. So that's what I'm doing now. In addition to that, I freelance as a writer for uh, some big brands and news outlets. And prior to that, I was, let's see, my story is that I come to all of this from communications and from a writing background. I was a newspaper reporter and editor for 20 years, starting in uh, I don't know, late 80s, I guess. And I did that until the internet and the smartphones and Craigslist pretty much destroyed the newspaper industry and uh, wiped out hundreds and thousands of jobs in the newspaper industry about 15 years ago. So I segued into corporate communications rather clumsily. Um, I had no desire to be in corporate communications and I don't think I was particularly good at it, but I needed to find a job. You know, my industry disappeared and, and you're probably old enough to like me to remember that 
Newspapers were a fact of life for decades and decades and decades, and then suddenly they were not anymore. You know, so、um, I was lucky to work for some giant corporations where I learned a lot about marketing and communicating to huge audiences in a way that's different from journalism, different from serving the general public. You're, you're serving a specific audience, but yet that audience is still large enough to have some diversity within it, within it. And、um, and so it was a nice、uh, transition for me. But ultimately, I didn't really fit in in corporate America.、Um, so after I turned fifty, I'm fifty nine right now. So this all kind of started the gels. I don't know, eight years ago or so. After I turned fifty, <clears throat> I noticed that I had aged out of the the target demographic for a lot of things, but particularly for the fitness industry. I've been going to gyms all my life, in many states all across the country,、um, but I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to articulate when you realize you're no longer being marketed to, but you know it when it happens. And I liken it to the if you're ever driving in a car with teenagers and they're singing along to the songs on the radio and you have no idea who these people are or what these songs are. Right, you're laughing. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? That's that's kind of it because pop music is is for kids in their teens and their early twenties. For the young ones, right? Right. Yeah, it's not. They're not trying to get people in their fifties. You know, we've got our Eagles records and our Rolling Stones records. They don't, they don't need us, right? So it's kind of like that. And I noticed that there was no effort to get my money or attention being put forth by the fitness industry after I turned fifty. And so I looked into that and found out that that's not just me being particularly sensitive. It is, in fact, the way it is. And、um, decided that rather than just trudge on in corporate communications, I would create my own business and try to establish a toehold in this underserved market. Okay, no, that that is awesome to hear. You are absolutely correct. I think、uh, <clears throat> it feels like the、uh, you know the exercise fitness world is totally young base.、Uh, you know, teenagers. Up to twenty nine years old. After thirty, it's almost the kiss of death, right? Like you're <laughs> forgotten, you know, like forgotten. So every、yeah. decade after that, you're like, okay, you're you might still try to stay in the game, but unfortunately, life is moving on, and every day there's new people turning eighteen years old, and、yeah. you know, we we still feel young at heart, but we all are aging. So yeah. yeah. So no. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I, I appreciate that.、Um, I guess can you tell me about your so you you get the Prime Fit content and you have、mm-hmm. your Optimal Aging podcast. Tell me what、uh, besides what you've spoken about so far, anything else that intrigued you to kind of go into that go into that realm? Yeah, sure. I can talk about this all day, so、yeah. um, I'm going to rely on you to interrupt me or to、no、edit out the parts that you don't care about.、Um, no As I said, I'm not. I don't come at this from fitness. I, I'm not a trainer. I can't tell you which that you should do this style of squat instead of that style of squat, right? Because you know everybody's got a different opinion on that, and mine isn't worth much. But I come at this from a communications point of view and from a public service point of view because that's what journalism is: is public service and communications. And the stories that are available to me in this. By by focusing on this demographic and this、uh, industry, are endlessly rich and fascinating. You know, people are changing their lives for the better. They are digging deep within themselves to examine their values and their past, and to try to plan a better future for themselves and for their families. And it's almost always. Um, it almost always involves some real heavy lifting on their part, and that's a bad pun. I, I genuinely didn't mean that. I meant you're, a, you're a psychological. I, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, some real psychological lifting because you think, well, why do you want to go to the gym? Well, I need to lose twenty pounds. Oh, why do you think you need to lose twenty pounds? Well, because when I was twenty, I I weighed twenty pounds less. Oh, well, you're sixty now. Well, yeah, but I want to be like I was when I was twenty. Oh, really? Why do you want to be like? You know, you go on and on. You find these really compelling reasons, and then beyond that,、um, the, the, another really fascinating layer to to all of this for me is that、um, 
fitness is essential to healthy aging and people don't know that um perhaps people younger than i am know that but maybe people who are now 40 and 30 know it because they've grown up in a society in which exercise was part of life in which there was a gym on every corner and everyone you knew was going to some class or trying to get in shape or whatever but when i was growing up there were not gyms people didn't work out there wasn't fitness craze i remember when it started in the late 70s with um, Hollywood celebrities and jogging and there was a big bestseller called the big book of running and that kind of put that on the map and then Jane Fonda came out with her home videos uh, and Nautilus started showing up in strip malls all that was just in the late 70s and early 80s so if you came up after that you have a different level of awareness about the importance of exercise if you came up before that anyone older than me you know you are probably not really aware of how important it is to stay strong and to have some endurance and to have agility particularly as you age we have as a society presented exercise and fitness as something that young people do to stay sexy um or to be attractive or to have nice muscles or you know, whatever those things are and and you know nothing wrong with with any of that right but what we haven't done is shared the other side of it and that is that after you turn 50 or 60 years old you need to exercise to maintain your strength to maintain your agility and to maintain your stamina just so you can go on living a healthy life and not hurt yourself doing ordinary activities and remain autonomous and maintain your independence and maintain your brain health and enjoy doing the things that you've always enjoyed doing right if you're a golfer and you want to keep golfing if you like to ride your bike and you want to keep riding your bike if you like to work in the garden you want to keep gardening you're finally retired and you can go on the, all the vacations and all the travel that you and your partner have planned for do it on doing for decades and now you get winded going to check the mail you know it, we haven't told people sufficiently that time in a gym or a fitness studio will improve the rest of their lives we when they're older we've only told them that it will make them look better when they're young and you know but we got to we got to do a better job as a society of sharing that so that's what motivates me is um the richness of the stories that i get people to share with me about the really profound changes that they're making in their lives coupled with this quest that i think we need to be on to do a better job of informing the people about this that is a that is absolutely key that's one of the interesting things for me is um <clears throat> i i spent 11 years working for the va and and i was um it, it's very interesting because you would see an individual who could jump over walls and do all these fascinating things and yeah. then it's i mean i don't know it feels like you might have kids that are active into high school if they play if they continue playing sports and then in college people get lazy so you got the freshman 15 or the you know the covid freshman 19 probably because of covid 19 or whatever yeah, but you yeah. know people people have gained weight over time and then you start to work and then we don't act, you know we're not active and we're like one day we'll one day we'll become active and yeah then what is 15 becomes 30 and then 30 becomes 45 and then the next thing you know you know an individual might be 50 years old or 40 years old and they go do a health screen they go to their primary care person and it's like hey congratulations you have hypertension or you have cholesterol issues or you have all these issues and then it's like oh my god what could we have done to you know you now you're like okay now we have trouble and it's like uh, sometimes the gym feels like a dirty word to people they don't mm. like it and and i think the thing is is that it's uh, it's it's very fascinating if you've been active all your life you I, I enjoy being active. I enjoy getting out there moving. And some people may not go to the gym. They may not feel comfortable going to a gym. So if there was a environment that was catered towards a I'd say a 45 up crowd, you mm -hmm. know, they probably would do very well because, you know, clearly these are people that are established in their career. They probably have money yeah. to spend in this arena. They want to take care of their health. They're not getting younger. It's a great opportunity for people to feel comfortable and do their thing. Um, I, I know for the veterans that were, you know, 60, 70, 80, or as the individual gets older, they don't feel that 
attractiveness that a young person has but i like yeah. to say hey you got the years like not everyone gets to live to 60 70 80 90 100 mm -hmm. so so um you know as i mentioned before i've seen you know veterans that were 90 100 years old like you know blowing past yeah, people. So it's sure. kind of amazing when you see that you know so yeah so, oh absolutely yeah my yeah. area no so cool well thank you for that i appreciate that sure. um in your career you know you've done journalism i know the corporate world may not have been your cup of tea but at least you probably learned a lot of things throughout oh yeah sure and and you know so you did the journalism the communication you've done the corporate wellness uh, or the corporate communications and then you're doing this um i guess any is there anything that you would have changed or anything that you'd keep the same or what what, what you got to say here <laughs> oh golly i don't know um that's really interesting to think about and it's the kind of thing that can keep you up at night, right? When you can't fall asleep, you're thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that 25 years ago, or you know, maybe I should have taken that job and, that I turned down or whatever. But I try not to think about that too much because um, I, I believe that we come to things when we're ready for them and not, not to be too cosmic about it, but you, know, you meet the right person at the time in your life when you're ready to, to share your life and you, have a business opportunity when you have the skill and opportunity to bring something to the table and all that. And when we're younger, we want everything to happen right now. You know, um, we were talking about this a little bit, you know, earlier, right. this idea that it seems like when you're young, you want to kind of even expect to get whatever you want and start at the top and do everything now. And, and if that were possible, you would miss out on so many rich opportunities that you have when you're just starting out and so i think it's great that we have to, to work so hard and i'm saying all of this to, to say that i don't particularly have any regrets if there's one you know the, the, all i ever wanted to be was a newspaper reporter and editor and journalist and i was and i made it to a top 20 newspaper here in atlanta the atlanta journal constitution it was one of the top 20 papers in the country for many decades we had hundreds of thousands of paid subscribers every day um you know, that's, that was the level I wanted to get to. And I made it and that was great. And then the industry vanished, you know, or was decimated, depending on how you care to look at it. And, um, and I did the best I could in, in kind of pivoting with that. So I don't blame myself for what I did when newspapers fell apart, because that was a hurricane that, that hit us all. No one, but, no one saw coming, right? <laughs> no yeah, one saw that coming. Yeah. No. And so, but I, there is one thing I wish I had done differently, not leaving papers, but starting all of this. Um, I, I wanted to leave corporate for several years, probably three or four years before I did. And I had a, two or three false starts where I would sort of make an effort at this and then corporate would pull me back in like Al Pacino. Every time I thought I was out, they pulled me back in because <laughs> I'd want to leave because I was bored and unsatisfied and, and just really also they're just not a fish out of water didn't really fit in there but they paid a ton of money you know <laughs> so i was like well okay i'm gonna leave now i've got a couple of freelance clients i'm gonna start this thing and then the, another opportunity would come along and that happened two or three times and finally i said stop i'm not going to engage in this uh, cycle again i'm stopping now i'm going to do this mm -hmm. and by this i mean this kind of content <clears throat> um, entrepreneurial venture so I guess what I, the only regret, I, I don't even like the word regret, but if I could do something different, I wouldn't have done three cycles of that. I would have after the first, I wish after the first time of realizing this is not for me. I want to do this other thing, which is scary because it's entrepreneurial. It's on my own. There's nobody else doing it. I can't just step into a job at an institutional employer with a W-2 and healthcare benefits and, uh, you know, administrative assistance, I'll have to figure everything out on my own and probably fail a lot and lose time and lose money and all of that. That's why I kept putting it off, you know, it's scary to step out there on your own. Um, it was for me, actually, I don't mean that to speak it's, for anyone it's... but myself. And so, you know, there are times when I think I started, I wish I had just jumped in feet first when I realized that this is the path I should be on. And instead I let fear hold me back for a little while. 
that is a well that is a story that a lot of people would probably sure. share share with you because clearly i think it's one of these that yeah if you if you know you're going to get a paycheck two weeks from now you know you you know and especially if it's a good paycheck then you'll just continue yeah. stay you know trotting along and you'll be like one day one day one day and then the next thing you know right a year or two or three or four or ten or 25 go by yeah and then you're like kicking yourself but i think if anything you probably you know through some of the things that you've learned and through some of the interactions you've made and the connections you made it, it kind of allowed you to really prep yourself for where you're at now because because you've been doing it for what you say eight nine years now eight about eight years um i i, I did some general freelancing for a couple of years before i settled on there's another this is a lesson i learned i wouldn't call it a regret or things i wish i'd done differently but this might be of value to anyone who's trying to do it um I, I thought I'll just be a general freelance writer for a while, right? And that, that'll be how I'll make my living. And, uh, you know, I was able to, to do okay with it. But it was very frustrating because you spend a lot of time working to find work, looking for the next freelance job. And then you might get it in an industry that you don't know anything about. So then you have to suddenly become an expert on, you know, the manufacture of construction tools or something, right? Some thing that's really important to a lot of people but that I don't know anything about and after I did that for a while I thought there's got to be a better way I need to I need to limit myself I need to to pick make some choices and focus on some topics that I think I can contribute to that interest me anyway that I already know a lot about and want to keep learning about it so I, I decided I picked three I like brainstormed a list of things that I really care about and it was news and pop culture and fitness. And so news, I went, uh, I called a friend at CNN and said, I want to come back to news. Can I work at CNN for part-time? I don't want a full-time job, but I want a part-time job to kind of um, make sure the bills are paid while I establish my own entrepreneurial path. And then the second thing was to freelance, have some freelance clients um, to, which, which can be very, um, like I said, chaotic. So I said, I want to focus on just the entertainment industry, which is very big in Atlanta. Almost all the TV shows and movies are produced here and the recording industry is very big here. So there's a lot in that realm and I know some people in it. So I thought I can do news at CNN. I can do movie production with a friend of mine who's in that. And then the other thing is I want to get into fitness. And that took me a little while to, once I decided on, I want fitness to be the third thing, it took a while to come up with prime fit content because it didn't exist. Nobody else is doing this. So I couldn't just, you know, I didn't see a role model and say, Oh, I'll do that. I had to find my way to creating it. Awesome. So I've been no, doing it since, uh, I've been doing it since, um, 18, summer of 2018. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's, I mean, this is a, it's, it's, it's wonderful to hear people's stories. And I think, uh, the, the beauty, I'm, I'm sure you would probably agree, is no need to reinvent the wheel, learn the lessons that people have taken yeah. along the way so we can all get better. So, so yeah. Right, right. Okay. So next question for you is, what does the future hold for you? What are you thinking in terms of, uh, I, and I will say, let me back up a sec. You mentioned you got the, you know, CNN, which is based out of Atlanta. So you are yeah. still doing your journalism and you, the pop culture, I think a lot of us love pop culture. So that's mm -hmm. a, probably an interesting thing to do in the fitness. So you are essentially trying to keep your hands in three pots at the same time. So I think you, you like a bit of diversity in your life. You don't want to do the same monotonous thing over and over. Funny you say that because that <laughs> is perfect with your question about what does the future hold? I constructed that those three, the, the three way sort of way to make a living, um, not out of a desire to have diversity in my income. It's just sort of, it's just, I thought this will be a way to have one steady source of income, CNN. The freelance stuff will be a way to um, have new people and new experiences and new things that will come and go because every freelance writer knows that you gain a client, you lose a client, you know, um, doesn't have anything to do with you. Sometimes the person you're working with gets fired and their new replacement doesn't want you or the, the department you were working for got its budget cut or you know, any number of things can happen. And, and you're the first one to go a lot of times. 
And then the, the prime, the content thing was something that I could control. So that was where I came at. It was more like the CNN's a rock freelance is lucrative, but unreliable. And then I'll create this thing on my own that I can control to fill in the gaps on freelance. Here's what I, another thing I learned through all of this was I really love the fitness stuff. Prime fit content, which I intended to be just a third of my life is kind of overtaken my life almost immediately because it's so interesting and so rich and um, so much fun. And I'm meeting great people like you and countless others. And that's really where my heart is. So if, if I could, you know, chart the future, it would be to focus on that and really build that into a big brand. But that's, um, that's a, it's a long haul for, for me anyway. I'm sure somebody else could do it immediately, but I haven't been able to. No, no, so, I think it's, it's good. You've done what you've done. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, thanks. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So. The final question we have for you is, and I, and I know my, my usual thought is I, I asked dietitians this, but you know, I think with your career journey and path that you've taken, which is, which is wonderful. I know a lot of people might be like, oh, they want, they crave stability or they want one thing in their life. And I think uh, myself, I do like kind of what you've done because you've dabbled in a little bit of everything. It keeps it interesting. Yes. I don't know. Some people might find it chaotic, but uh I don't know. I don't, it's not chaotic. It's, um, I think that's what I didn't like about just being a straight up freelancer. That felt like chaos to me. So I imposed some structure on it with these three buckets of revenue, so to speak, right. the three, three bar stools, the three, three legs of my bar stool. And, um, so it keeps it from being chaotic, although it's a it's, lot. It's sometimes. chaotic. It's chaotic in one sense, but I think the thing is, is that we all, uh, I'm sure it, you would strike me as someone that probably has a lot of interest. So then yeah. you'd like to learn, you like to read, yeah. you like to consume. So then sure. you're like, you know, this, if you were just being a, a, you know, if you're like a finance writer, right? Like all yeah. you do is finance. Some people like that. God bless them. This is what they want to do. Exactly. So, Good for them. Person. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, what I'd like to do is, is develop a book idea out of, out of the fitness, because I think it's a really huge, and fascinating story again not an exercise manual not telling you how to lose 20 pounds after you turn 50 or anything like that but it's about the way that we live as a society now that we're living longer we're living healthier uh, and we're demanding more out of our um, bodies and each other and society and, and you know being 65 or 70 today is not what it was 20 40 60 years ago it's just a really interesting tale and fitness has a huge part in that story. So there's a book there and uh, that's what I'm hoping to start focusing on soon. I like it. I like it. Awesome. Well, Jay, I appreciate your time. I could sit here and chat with you all day. <laughs> same, same. Absolutely. I, I want to respect your time. So I'm going to end the podcast, but thank you. And then we'll just. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. It's me. Your greatest gift if you are watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you are listening on a podcast platform, please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get it to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.